Do you have a PlayStation 5 professional yet? What? You do? We're late? Well, whatever. We're checking out the PS5 Pro and I am actually pretty excited about this thing. I know that a lot of the coverage of the PS5 Pro has been focused on the 200 <coughs> plus dollar price hike, but there's actually a lot of value in here that I don't know if Sony is getting quite enough credit for. For starters, there's the GPU upgrade. The new GPU has 67% more compute units for an estimated 45% better real world performance in games. Okay, most people, probably won't notice the difference, but there's more. We lose the disk drive, which is actually a gigantic bummer. But what we gain is a two terabyte rather than one terabyte SSD, and it wasn't even a full terabyte on the original console, and we get another two gigs of DDR5 memory that is dedicated to the CPU, giving us the entire 16 gigs of GDDR6 memory for the GPU. Once again, I have sequestered myself, not looking at other coverage in order to bring you guys the freshest impressions, and I feel like my wife. I thought it was gonna be bigger. They really managed it. They made the PS5 shape after all this time not look completely stupid. I think it looks kind of cool. Do people think it looks cool? Oh boy. I don't have the vertical stand on? Yes, I understand that the vertical stand costs, what, what is it, 30 bucks or something like that? Which is, really? 30 bucks? Yeah. I think this could have been included. But here's an option. Don't buy it. It's fine. Who cares? What? It's not gonna fall over. It's fine. It's fine. I'm gonna go on Bamboo Handy right now. And there's nothing. But there is a PlayStation 5 Slim vertical stand. So whether you use a mail order printing service or you just find a friend that has a 3D printer or a local makerspace, I believe in you. I think you can figure it out. Let's talk about the key benefits here. Sony, I think has actually done a pretty good job of not overselling what the PS5 Pro is. It uses a combination of a more powerful GPU, a little bit more system memory, and probably most importantly, their new spectral super resolution, which seems like a kind of in-between AMD zone FSR, which is their upscaling technique and slash sharpening technique, and Nvidia's deep learning super sampling, which is an AI-driven upscaling technique. So Sony's is AI-driven, but doesn't seem to be quite on the level of Nvidia's, at least if Digital Foundry's coverage is to be believed, which pretty good about that stuff. It should be noted though, that this is in PS5 Pro enhanced games. And in a lot of titles, you can expect more along the lines of just smoother frame rates at the same visual fidelity, or in older backwards compatible titles, in some cases, a little bit of subtle upscaling. So far, pretty mediocre sales pitch but we haven't touched on their more advanced ray tracing. According to Sony, they're using a new generation AMD ray tracing engine that isn't even present in AMD's own dedicated GPUs, at least not yet, which should result in some more impressive lighting effects. All of this can wait for the side-by-side -side that we're gonna do a little bit later. First, let's take a closer look at it physically. Ah, yes, Kensington Lock, HDMI 2.1, supporting up to 8K output. Though I couldn't help noticing that not only did Sony remove the 8K branding from the original PS5, it is also not present on the new PS5 Pro. They talk about variable refresh rate, they talk about 120 hertz 4K gaming and HDR, but no mention of 8K, even though technically it will output it and these new upscaling techniques could actually help with that. Power input for the, what is it, 390 watt power supply? I gotta imagine that's over spec for this thing just based on the size. That's a big cooling fan. Okay, maybe she does do 400 watts. Good gravy, look at that cooler. It's not that heavy though. A couple more USB ports, USB-C this time with one of them being 10 gig super speed. And of course, our power button. <sighs> I know I mentioned this already, but once again, guys, there is no disk drive. And as we covered recently, that is going to cost you in the longer term, but is also probably just the future we're headed towards whether we like it or not. Oh, one other minor gripe. Even though the size is very similar to the PS5 Slim, the plates are not intercompatible, even though it looks like Sony could have made them intercompatible if they'd really wanted to. Oh, there is one cool thing though. I saw this mentioned by a couple folks. Uh, apparently the CMOS battery is much easier to get at. Um, wait. Cool! This is really cool because what this button cell does 
is it allows the motherboard to get just a little bit of power to keep the clock accurate once the power plug is yanked. So once these button cells die, you can get kind of flaky behavior from computers and computers that are shaped like PlayStations. Upgradable SSD. I still cannot get over that Sony didn't go proprietary. You know, memory stick, mini disc. They have such a long, rich history. Uh, memory cards for the original PlayStation. Good guy, Sony. Well, bad guy, Sony, who did the right thing this time. Technically, Sony sent this and told us we're not allowed to tear it down. At least not yet, so I won't. Huh? Huh? I mean, she probably still works. Hey, let's find out after this message from our sponsor. War Thunder. Thanks, War Thunder, for sponsoring this video. Take command of over 2,500 highly detailed vehicles as you unleash a world of pain on your enemies. War Thunder makes it easy to drop in and out of the action, and with their new mobile version for iOS and Android, you can play just about anywhere. So whether you're waiting in line to pick up the new PS5 Pro, or you have it all hooked up and you're ready to get gaming, War Thunder is there to scratch that destructive itch. So check it out today, and even get some premium unlocks by using our link in the video description. I think the biggest difference though is in the lighting. Both of these are running in HDR, but only one of them has lights that look like lights that are casting light. Like look how much more detailed the shadows are on the stairs. Oh, we should definitely go to fidelity mode then. That'll be a 30 FPS mode. Wow, they somehow uh, put even less clothing on Tifa. I haven't played this yet. No, it's only that, the that's, original. That's me first. Yeah, <laughs> this is my game. Outfit. Don't buy the outfits. You earn them. Okay, that's way better. But then that's 30 FPS. Oh, yeah. gross! <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. That's what I'm oh, buddy! Just the ability to never have to play in 30 FPS mode. That would be a major factor for me. One thing I've seen though, is people claiming that if you sit far enough back from your TV, it doesn't make a difference. So let's go back to performance mode because I'm definitely gonna notice the FPS difference. And then let's move away from it. Very noticeably softer, even from here. And these are only 42 inch displays. So this is a very, very reasonable distance from them. As soon as things are in motion, like the lighting, the lighting across his six pack. This is a cutscene, and these ga these games have really good, like cutscene rendering. So I'd be interested to see once we're in the battle how it feels. He put fire on my body. Okay, I get aliasing on the the back rail. You're in clean, yeah. I'm getting more aliasing. And I saw a little bit of flickering on the stairs when we were coming into the Colosseum. Mm -hmm. However, I also saw it on that one, so it seems to be just like a rendering error of some sort. Or maybe a realistic representation of like crappy LED lighting. <laughs> You're not Marvel, Sony. They already sold me the game, but they can't just <laughs> let me play it. Fidelity Pro still runs at 30 frames per second? Yeah, but I think it's a native 4K. Okay, but here's what I wanna see. Is my Performance Pro gonna look like your Fidelity? Fidelity. Uh, I did Performance. The fact that we're looking this closely tells you pretty much everything you need to know. Let's go back to gaming distance. <laughs> I mean, like, if I'm buying a PlayStation today anyway, and I just, you know, I'm like, oh, I don't know, whatever, I have 200 extra dollars burning a hole in my pocket, sure, whatever, buy a pro. Do you want to see your 30 FPS mode versus my FPS mode? You know what? Oh, this is actually quite playable, especially compared to Final Fantasy Rebirth. Yeah. Like, this is fine. This is probably somewhere between 45-ish uh, FPS. Wait, 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 I think it's locked. She, it looks better than 30, that's for she's, sure. She's, cr like, feel it, too. Like, she feels responsive. There's no way that's 30 FPS, it's just not. I, I might be wrong. I'm so console brained now. <laughs> and the difference between 30 and 40 is very, very well. Okay, most people don't care, but I can, t I still think it's a little silly to be remastering a game that's this new, but. I don't mind it too much when it's a $10 upgrade. If it, they made me rebuy it, yeah, I'd be freaking pissed. This looks. Exactly the same. Let's get to the gameplay. Yeah, 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 we're gonna get to the gameplay. Uh, Motion blur off, see you later. Thank you for the option. Okay. That's 30 FPS for sure. Yep. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I'm getting a little less shimmer than you. It's worth 200 bucks. I'm gonna go down to balanced and I'm gonna see if it still looks about the same, mm. but I'm getting way better FPS. I mean, I guess it depends on how good you are at the combat. I spent a lot of time slinking around in the foliage, okay? David, do you want to change yours to favor uh, performance? You can tell there's a bit too much of an over-sharpening filter applied to yours. Mm -hmm. The upscaling is doing some work, 
but I don't know if I'd never seen this. We're doing side by side because it's fun to play these kinds of games. If it wasn't side by side, I could not tell you which one is which. And it's nice that there's 55 plus games that are already PS5 Pro patched. I expect that the games that are more poorly optimized are gonna see the bigger boost, whereas all these Sony first party games are all pretty friggin' tight on the PS5 that the jump in Fidelity wouldn't be worth it. Which is tough because that's why you buy a PS5 is for the Sony first party stuff. Yeah. So. Not a bad machine. You're getting the extra performance. You're getting some quality of life improvements. You're getting extra storage. But when we compare the value proposition to the original PS5, or especially to the PS5 Slim, you can get a Slim, a disk drive, and a portal so that you can play your games on the go all around your house for the price of just the box here. <sighs> you know what else you can do? Subscribe to Short Circuit. Short Circuit for life.